welcome to uh, this month's uh, video. And I, I I promised I would do a river scene, and, and I looked online and I saw that there was just a boatload of people doing how to do a river. But what I did notice was that other than Dave Ferrari, who only gave a little bit, and, and a credit to him, at least he showed different types of texture, but different textures of water. And one of the things I've noticed as I've looked at scenes of, uh, from model railroading is that there's two, two kind of different thoughts in that. One is folks that just pour the Envirotex and call it good enough, it looks like water, and they walk away, and that's fine. The other folks that, that just avoid it altogether. And there are a few modelers who actually go to the effort to try and do texture in model railroading. So I thought what I'd do is do a video on how to do different types of texture. Now, full disclosure, um, I've done rivers. That's what I've done the most of. So I also had to learn some of this. And as many of you have seen, I mean, when I'm trying to learn a technique or do something, the, the secret is to take a lot of little blocks and try and figure it out. This is no different with water. So just like I did with my grasses, trying to figure out how to do prairie grass, I did the same thing with, with water scenes. And, and, and that's really where we're coming to right now. No one is an expert on this. If you're not making mistakes in model railroading, you're not model railroading. Well, that's not totally fair. But you're going to make mistakes. That's just part of model railroading. So what I do a lot of is, like I said, make blocks. This is my first block. It's just a scrap piece of wood I just grabbed out of the, the scrap bin. And I put down some base to, to underlie. I'm, I'm going to do a river. You saw the, the scene that I'm working on. And I started working on my river texture. And I poured my, my Envirotex. And then I began to create different layers. Now. While I was doing it, I also tried a bunch of different products and a lot of different ideas. Um, and if you've gone to the, um, to the, whoop, there we go, another email. If uh, you've gone to um, the uh, Facebook page, you saw a lot of these photographs. This is a, a, a photograph of, uh, you can kind of see the texture here. This is kind of a pond. Um, this is my marsh, I'm trying to do a marsh. Um, and then, these were a pair of uh, river scenes that I, this was my uh, first attempt. Not really was thrilled at it. This is my second attempt, which I thought was really kind of nice. But in doing that, I came up with a technique to do ice. And the ice is absolutely fantastic. I mean, you don't kind of see it. So, um, and this was a mistake. So that's how you get you learn different things. And to think that I don't make mistakes either. This is a mistake here. Um, this is a, uh, a gel on top, and uh, it got a little thick, and what you're seeing underneath here, the white, is the, un is the gel that's not drying. I mixed it and kind of diluted it down to see what would happen if I diluted it down to make softer waves, and what happened was is that uh, it didn't dry very well. It was a little thick. So again, um, whalers are learning different things. And so... You don't have to go that fancy. I mean, I was practicing different textures. This is just a piece of cardboard, and you can see I've tried a couple different products and a couple different textures. Um, and I'm going to be fair. A lot of the textures I learn from are not in model railroading because there's just nothing I can find in model railroading that talks about how to do it. Dave Ferrier, like I said, is the only one that I found that had anything on doing texture for water. And so I went to other sources. Uh, the number one source I went to, well, I went to uh, the uh, gamers, the board gamers. There's a gentleman that has a YouTube channel called Terrascape. Absolutely fantastic channel. Mike does a incredible job there and shows a lot of different scenes, textures, and that. Not too many how-tos, but gives you a real good idea of what you can achieve. And so that's one source. But if you want to see seeing rivers, I mean, there's a lot of people online that show you how to do the rivers. There's, I, I counted probably about 15, 20 videos on that. All of them were good videos. Um, maybe not the technique, whatever to use, but certainly all of them achieved what they wanted to do, which is to make a river. So 
again, going back to doing texture. So what I did is I set up here um, four blocks. These are four blocks. They already have a base put on them. They're Envirotex. I'll explain what the differences are between the four blocks. This is just painted on the bottom. I just painted it on the bottom and then poured Envirotex over top of it. Um, these three, I use the same base bottom that I would use on mine, but each of them are a little different. This is the clear color. This has got green. It's a little darker than I would have wanted, but it achieves the goal. And then this is blue. This one was definitely a lot darker than I wanted to do. And again, if I were to do this again, I used um, Enviro, uh, full coil paints for both of these. In the future, if I want to dye this a little darker, I'm probably going to try something like an ink. Um, I think it would work a little better than, than this. Uh, the textures were a little rough. Um, this one, these are using uh, acrylics and Mod Podge, and I tried a couple different uh, acrylic paints, and in the end, I found that um, this is Grumble Barchers. These are can be found at Michaels or Welk or uh, uh, Hobby Lobby paints. These are just simple, a little higher quality uh, acrylic paint. You, you don't need a lot of them, and I think uh, I'm looking at this. This tube was like four bucks, you know, so it's not that terribly expensive. But the colors coming from that are much richer and a lot smoother once they mix into the acrylic. This, these two colors here, we're using um, the Cheap Basic, which is about uh, the same price, and it really, the, the, it didn't mix as well as I wanted to. Now, this is Mod Podge that mixes as well. It did mix fine uh, with the acrylic mix, which is designed to go with it. So, that being said, let's kind of get into um, doing some texture. And I, instead of doing these first, I'm going to just kind of do a little bit here on uh, on this cardboard, just kind of give you an idea of what you can do. So the products that I'm using are, let's see here, here we go. These are probably the two best products I've found. Um, this is Mod Podge. This is the gloss version. Um, you know, you can get this at Hobby Lobby. I think I paid nine bucks for this bottle. And it's more than enough to do all the rivers and lakes I have. This is uh, Liquid Tex uh, Gloss Super Heavy Gel. And I like this because if I want to make a bigger wave, uh, for instance, if I was doing an ocean type scene, you can see right here, I get really good waves out of that. And it's kind of nice because it's kind of a little thicker. And so we're going to start with that first. I'm going to simply just take a flip this over, because that's how this is done. And I'm going to just show you how to do like a harbor scene. And one of the things I want to comment on water scenes is, you know, I'm not saying the water is never this glass steel. It does occur. But I live in the Puget Sound. And in the Puget Sound, um, you know, we have lots of harbors here. We're right on the Pacific Ocean. There's harbors around us wherever we go. We see big ships coming in. We see canals and everything under the sun. It is rare that we see this. It occurs maybe 1% of the time that I go out and see the stuff I see that. Most of the time, the wind is blowing, the tide's moving in, the tide's going out, and it's got ripples, and it's got waves, and it's got different types of things. So I'm gonna go to those harbor scenes first and trying to touch into those first for textures to kind of give you a couple ideas what to do with it. So um, this is nothing more than a gel. You can see it's just a, a white creamy paste. Looks uh, a lot like uh, a paint, but it'll dry crystal clear. And I'm going to add just a little bit of color to it so you can see it a little better on the, on the cardboard here. So I'm just going to take this. Uh, this is a, 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 um, a Theo blue. And it's just nothing more than just an acrylic paint. And it's not going to take much. Literally, that might even be too much what I put in there. But we'll see. And then I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to mix it up. And it'll look like it's a baby blue, but it will dry exactly the color you're looking for. So don't, uh, 
and again, this is part of that experimenting. I, before, I'd rather make mistakes on the cardboard than on the layout. So that's what we're going to try to do here. And uh, I got just this, I went to actually to Michael's, got this great mixing dish for mixing things up. And you can use whatever color that is appropriate for you. Uh, but that's what I'm going to go with right here. So you can see I got just a nice baby blue color. Now, to do ocean waves, you know, we're going to spread it out. And this is spread out. So let's talk about ocean waves. Um, you know, a, an ocean in a harbor, you might get waves that are between six and well if it's a little rougher sea a little rougher day you might get 11 inch waves but for the most part they're going to be under a foot tall so that means that we're going to need this to be about a 16th of an inch thick so what i'm doing is just simply smearing this out i know it's just like wow that's that's it that's all you got to do to make this no not really I'm going to show you making waves is really tough. So if you wanted to do an area that wasn't in a harbor where, you know, that's surrounded and kind of prevents a lot of the waving, and it's a, a 6 to 11 inch wave, this is the technique right there. I know, it's really tough. This is it. You just kind of go like this, and you'll make that choppy water that you're used to seeing. And you just kind of go just like that, and you just kind of it around. Now if you're going to do bigger waves, you can do that as well. But you're just going to take this really high-tech spoon and just create the waves just like so. And I'm just random. Now I got this from the shipbuilders. They do a lot of this. Now of course they're doing it thicker because they're doing, you know, bigger waves out in the wide ocean. But for us, this will be fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up so you can kind of see the texture I've got here. So if we can just focus on it. So there you go. It's not really the greatest at focusing. But you can see that it's just kind of sitting up there. And it's just kind of, just kind of, I'm trying to see if I can get a little glare out of it. There you go. There's a, there's a little glare. And you can see that that's, that's all there is to doing those type of waves. But let's say you want to do waves coming in to a beach. And you don't want really rough waves. And, and again, we're modeling in, in a smaller scale than, than a lot of these other ones. Terrascape, uh, Mike there did some incredible surfs coming in, breaking waves and all. But the waves are probably about this tall, which is... You know, almost as tall as some of our locomotives. So, um, But what you can do is you can take this same thing and just kind of use a spoon and kind of go in a line and create those waves kind of rolling in right behind one another. And you just kind of take the spoon and push it a bit. Now, understand, we would have Envirotex under there. And so we're just forming just really the surface of this. We're just trying to create just the surface of the water here. We're not trying to create, you know, the whole ocean here, but just the texture of the water that's on top of it. And just like that, I've got some waves coming in. So I'll take and show you what these look like. Now these, let's see if I can get it in there. You may not be able to tell, but there's actual lines. Maybe what I'll do is I'll take a, it's really hard to do this. I'm looking at the video at the display there. So you can see the waves right there. And if I kind of turn it just a bit, and if you uh, roll it up like this, see the waves kind of coming in there. So there's this, these definite lines 
right along here and along here and along here. You can see that. Maybe if I put my body in there and put a little more shadow into that. You can see that. Anyway, I'll take a photograph of that. But that's all it takes to do. And again, even though I'm showing you that, you're going to have to practice it because you're going to have to learn how to make these lines so that they're kind of believable. And that's exactly what you're doing. And I'm just taking the edge of the spoon, which is going to kind of push that gel in the direction I want it. And I'm kind of just pushing the lines into there so that they look like waves. That's all it's going to take to do. So that kind of situation, those are your kind of couple different options. But now, let's take in, as a matter of fact, I'm going to put that on one of these. Now, I'm going to talk about why I use Envirotex first. Envirotex creates great depth. And you could use this just medium gel for your river and all that, but don't use it in thick quantities because it'll take forever to dry and you don't want to have this. So. I would use Envirotex as kind of. Resin is really nice and hard. It's real easy to clean up. And this is not too bad either. But this is just so much better. It's easy to work with and everything. But the reason why I don't want to do it, a lot of people don't want to do it, is because if you make a mistake pouring the resin and it doesn't dry, you've got a disaster on your hand. And you're going to have to either recoat that with another layer of Envirotex a real thin one that'll harden up and dry and that's really about the only way you have to do that and when you put this on and around models and you have to rip it all up that means you're pretty much going to have to rebuild that model so I understand why a lot of people don't want to do, use that but again making water on, an, on a model railroading this is pretty much like a, a 910 type of, of deal so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this same gel and I'm going to take this blue and I'm literally going to just smear it right down to here. This is on a block here. We'll take pictures of this when it dries. And I'm just kind of smearing it over top of this. Just like so. Just again, I'm making my gel about as tall, about as half as thick as I want my waves. That's really what I'm kind of working on. Half as thick because it's going to pop up and it's going to push down as I'm doing this. As you can see, I'm really not, I'm really not trying to, uh, you know, it's, it's not what I would call I smeared it like a like a cake. I'm frosting it, but I'm not trying to cover every single piece of it. All right, and now I'm gonna just make some ocean waves with this. And again, I'm just gonna start. Until we get to the next step, which I want to clean this mess up a bit, we'll take a break. We'll be back in just a second. Okay, here's a close-up of it wet. Um, you can see again that baby blue as it dries out. It's going to be real clear. You'll see it here in a second. In hindsight, I probably would dye the Envirotex the blue color and leave it at that and leave the the waves clear. I like the shape of them. Here's some photographs of a second experiment with the waves just white with a slight dry brush on it. Anyway, next project. Okay, so it's all some photographs. You saw it when it was wet and I'll show you when it's dry when it when I get photographs from that. 
So the next two things I want to do is I want to deal with a pond. So a pond, and I'm going to do a green water pond, doesn't matter. So pond, I use Mod Podge. And then we'll show you what we can do with the river between the two of them. So with this, I'm just simply taking the Mod Podge. I'm literally just going to pour a little bit. Well, I'm going to do it first on this on this here on the cardboard just so you can get an idea of what what what's going to take now when doing a pawn and when I'm talking about doing a pawn I'm talking about doing something that's just where the wind is just lightly blowing over it you know those kind of we see them all the time where there's there's little ripples and things like that. So it's a, it's a calmer water, but there's some motion. And that motion is what really sets the modeling apart. So again, we're going to just take and smooth this out nice and smooth. And um, if I had a pond, I'd be doing this all over the whole pond. But in this case here, we're just on the cardboard. So I'm just going to kind of smooth it out so it's kind of thin. And I'm trying to be careful not to get really any any real air bubbles. I have a few in there, that's fine, that's not a big deal, but I want to try and keep it so it's nice and smooth and doesn't have many air bubbles in there. Okay, then once I have that, I'm going to grab a toothpick here, and I'm just going to start drawing in my ripples. So if I want to do that, now again, this would be over in Virotex. And so these will actually dry and just kind of, kind of go like that. And that's how you get ripples in the water. So if I had like a boat or something like that and I wanted to kind of lazily just rowing the boat or something like that, you might want to do something like this. Or if somebody threw a rock in there, you could, you know, make circles and then, you know, go all the way out, however you want to. Now. Um, the Mod Podge creates a softer wave because it doesn't have any body. If I did this with the gel, you'd have a real harsh and your waves would kind of stand up. And that's the advantage of the Mod Podge is that it just it's, creates these soft waves. And you can be patient because what you want to do is you can even let it dry a little bit. You just don't want to get too dry, but you just kind of sit here and just work with it. It's very patient, tiring work. Again, Good modeling is uh, as much patience as it is anything else. And just kind of go like that. And again, it's going to give you that effect. So if you can see this, here you can see the lines in there. And that's all that it takes to do that type of a situation. Now, on the other half of this here, I'm going to show you another thing we find, which is when the water, you don't really get that, you got that wind blowing across and it's kind of rippling along. So you can just kind of take this and just kind of, and I don't like doing that with Mod Podge, I'll be honest with you. I find it to be easier to do with the gel, but this will work just as well, or at least but you have to be a little more patient with it. And you have to kind of see it there. There you go, and it just kind of creates that ripple effect and it will actually kind of just dry that way so you can just and that's all it is to it that's that technique with that so if I want to do a pond with this and I want to do something with these ripples then I would use the Mod Podge and kind of go over it so what I'm going to do I want to do a little bit of both on this one. So I'm going to try and create some ripples around here. Uh, by the way, talking about Envirotex, how thick to pour this stuff. You want to pour it thin so it has a chance to dry, but not too thin because it needs the temperature. And, and Dave Ferry makes a great point. If you can raise the temperature of your layout room to about 85 degrees, it'll dry really well. Now. Um, I used, uh, again, I used a full quill in here, and one of the things that I discovered with full quill is it doesn't help, kind of leaves it a little tough to, it doesn't dry quite as well. This has been drying for about four days, 
and it's still a little soft. Um, and so that's why I say the other reason I kind of do is, is I would probably use ink in the future. I've never used folk wool in Envirotex before. Matter of fact, I typically don't, I, I like my Envirotex to be clear. Um, it's just one less thing to help deal with. But if you want to dye it, I really suggest taking blocks and trying your, your mixtures until you get the color that you want and you get it to dry the way you want to. You need maybe a little bit more hardener. And that's what the problem with this one is it didn't get as much hardener. But again, this is an experimental block, so it doesn't really matter. I'm just like, well, I'm gonna go on to the next step. So I'm gonna take a little Envirotex here and I'm gonna put it on here. But, excuse me, Mod Podge, not Envirotex. It's already got Envirotex on it. And I'm just gonna put some on here Again, I don't need a lot for what I'm going to be doing here. And I'm going to just kind of smear it around. And one of the things to know about Envirotex is uh, wherever you have, like I had a taped lines all around this thing, so that the Envirotex goes up and forms a meniscus on that. And as it dries, that becomes a little more lower. So you need to make sure that if you're pouring it over your river or something like that, it does shrink just a little. It's not much, but you want to make sure that it, any rocks you want covered, stay covered. I got a few rocks here. These are small pebbles, and they're, they're kind of sticking through a bit. That'll be fun to work with. But, you know, if it, was, uh, if it was on the layout and I made that mistake, I'd be like, okay, I just need to pour another layer over top of that just to get it a little thicker. So when you're doing that, please uh, make sure you get those type of things done because you do not want to have to deal with that. And again, I'm trying to make this thin, but I want a nice coating so I can draw my lines in it. Okay, and I think I just about got what I want here. Now I'm just going to take my my toothpick and I'm just going to drip a little water here. Yeah, it's still a little little wet. We can let it dry a bit. I can also take the toothpick and kind of any big bubbles I want to remove. I can usually get. They don't, you know, in Biotech you kind of breathe on it, gets it, releases it. But with this. Uh, um, acrylic, it doesn't do the same thing. And it's the CO2 that causes the release. So, but we can just kind of, just like this, there we go. Starting to form some lines. And that's all I'm doing. I'm just going like that and forming just a few lines here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but just kind of taking this corner and just going right along one another. And if you get too much on there, don't be afraid to take it out because it'll, it'll build up little balls on there. You can take that off and just... And remember, we're, it doesn't have to be exact. What you're trying to do is just create that movement, that, that look that there's actually some movement to that water, some fluidness to it. very patient yeah I'm not as patient as I should be but watching me draw lines on the on the Mod Podge would be kind of boring so but that's all you have to do and then with the rest of it if you wanted to do a soft wave like a river or something like that you can take it just like this and kind of just push it around and form waves and that'll form As if there's a current or something there. Now, 
on a river or something like that, you, you don't really want straight lines. You know, the ocean does that because as the wave comes in, it's hitting the bottom and it kind of forms that nice fluid line. But in a river, it's always flowing down. So if anything, it's gonna ripple off, a, you're, you're gonna ripple off of the back end off the shores and go this way down the, the river. But I'm just trying to create a soft wave through here as if it's got a little current in here. It may look funny when it dries because I got a ripple, a calm water ripple, and then I've got these waves, these little currents in here. Now these would be, these waves in here might be something you'd find, oh, I don't want to say on a rapids, but maybe, great example, you know when a, on a, off a dam, you got kind of that water churning and it's got a little ripple to it and they're, they're getting up a little ways. This might be a good example of that. Um, another one, uh, if you were doing this, uh, say you're doing a, a, a river that's a little deeper, you'd, you'd probably see something like this. Oh, great example. On the Missouri River, um, as the water comes out of the rapids, it gets into these, these other areas that's kind of got a, a little lumpiness like this as you're going through it. This would be a great example of doing something like that. Um, and, and that was one of the things that uh, I would say, you know, when I go crazy when I go fishing or I do something like that I'm out in nature I'm always looking how to model it <laughs> kind of the way I, I look at things um, and so I, I would say that that's a lot of, of what you want to do and on a river you got all different kinds so if you got a rapids and then kind of settles out you get this bubbling stuff and then you got areas pockets where it's kind of a, a pool and, and it just kind of smooths out and maybe you have a little ripple there because the frog jumped in or something like that. So you get a little bit of everything that's going on all at the same time on a river. And that creates for an interesting modeling if you do that kind of work. But that means it's really, you have to think it through and plan it out a lot. So that being said, that's kind of what you do. So there we go. You can see the, uh, the ripples here. And I did right there. You can see that these are kind of got the rounding things and then a little ripple going through here. And I did the same thing on this. And uh, I'll shoot a photograph of these so you can take a look at it. But I just got these, again, these nice areas here where all I'm doing, oh, see, I, and you don't want to go jiggly. You want to really kind of make them because the water flows smoothly where it goes around. There we go. So we'll take a break from here. I'm going to take a couple photographs of this. You can see what it looks like when it's wet and kind of get an idea. I'm going to take a photograph of also the cardboard here so you can see both of them. And uh, we'll be back in just a minute. So here they are. They're wet. This is the cardboard and the uh, little square. And again, this is going to be a pond. It's kind of green. I love the color that's going to come out of this and just the movement of the water looks fantastic. Anyway, next project. Okay, so now we're gonna do um, small waves. Now, in a river, especially a big river or something like that, Mississippi's a great example of it, there's times when it's, it's not ever really smooth because there's all these currents flowing over it. And you can kind of see that, it's kind of, they're subtle, they're not really, if, if you were to tell you to describe, well, how tall are they, you, would, you wouldn't be able to describe them. You just see that movement of that water. Well, I thought when I uh, was doing the uh, Mod Podge, I thought that I would be able to do that with that. And I found that I, I couldn't really create that type of scene. It just, it just, it was just really muddied it up, didn't really look very good. As a matter of fact, um, on the back here, 
this is a couple attempts at doing it right here. This is an attempt at doing it, and it just was too rough, and everything I tried just could not really create what I wanted to do. So that's when I came back to uh, the thick gel again, and this time with the thick gel, I was able to actually create what I wanted. So I'm going to take um, a little more of this gel here. I don't need as much as I used to when I was doing the other waves there. Now, I'm using the painted bottom one. Normally when you paint the bottom, you're trying to depict a real deep river, and so you kind of shallow it out and shallow it out and get it darker and darker. You can do the same thing also with the Envirotex. If you're doing that, you can go with a darker color on the bottom and begin to lighten it up until you get a nice, clear, light color on top. Um, I've seen it done. I've seen it done very effectively, and it works really well. There's videos on how to doing that, so I'm not going to bother going into that. But because all my blocks are real thin, I'm not really working about it. I just decided to do a painted one just because maybe you want to see it. And that's all I did. I'm also going to add a little blue to this because I wanted this to look a little deeper. So I'm going to use just a, a real tiny amount of blue here. Just ever so slight amount of blue. Okay, and I'm going to mix this up. Again, that's what, that, to be fair, that's what these gels are for, <laughs> for mixing paint. So if you want to take acrylic paints and do oil, oils type where they have texture in the oil paint, that's what you're trying to do, and, and that's what they're for. So they're really designed very well to work with the... Uh, with the acrylic paints. Okay, now, this stuff on here is going to be very, very thin because I really don't want a ripple per se. I want to try and create that flow of that current. So I'm going to really try to paint these kind of thin. And like I said, I tried this with the Mod Podge and um, I wasn't happy with the result. I'm not saying you can't get a good result but I really wasn't happy with it. So I'll show you what I do to, to kind of get that, that look. Okay, so we're trying to do a current. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just basically, as if maybe the wind's blowing across it, or something like that. And so I'm just kind of trying to create that, you know, that ripply effect, like there's a current or something going on. And you can modify this based on how thick you make the gel. You can have it maybe a little more active, um, or you can have it really soft. So, and I've got different thicknesses on this, so when it dries, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. Again, it's just going across there like this. And I'm just stippling it really with the popsicle stick. That's all I'm doing, just making kind of a very small. They're, they're, I, these waves are maybe a couple millimeters tall when I'm doing this. So if you're doing a couple millimeter tall, you can do this type of stuff with a real thin. But I'm trying to make that current, so. Let me show you what we do to get that. I kind of thicken these corners because of the Virotex going up in the corners there, but that'll be fine. We'll make it work. Okay, so there it is, kind of just chunked around there a bit, and now I'm going to grab water, and I'm going to just mist it on a bit, and the water will actually soften the waves. And then I'll take in the flat end and kind of just knocking them down. Just 
like so. And the gel in the water mixes and it softens it to the point that I can create these waves. And if you were to look at it now versus what it was before, it was really kind of pointed and now the waves have kind of rolled over a bit. And that will take you some practice to learn how to do that. How much water and how to make it work. But that's it. And I, again, a very little blue. It probably looks white maybe on the camera, but there's a little blue in there. And that's how I would do a soft rippling effect. Um, I've dealt with them where I've built a little higher peaks on it and then got them wet and then took the popsicle stick and kind of rolled them over. So if you've ever seen uh, a textured wall where they got, it's called knockdown. So they, they spackle it with a, with a texture, like, um, I don't want to say popcorn texture, but you've seen textured walls before in a house. And then they get the trowel wet and they knock it down so it kind of drags down and nice and smooth. It's exactly what I'm doing with this right here. And so depending on how tall my waves are and how much I want to knock it down, that's how it gets done. So that's what I'm doing, it's just something like that. And I'll take some photographs of this so you can see what it looks like. And uh, we'll go to the very last one, which is more of a rapid type river. So let's take a break again. Well, it turned out a little rougher than I wanted, but it works. Uh, and the blue was so light that you could barely tell, which is probably an advantage in this case. But overall, not bad. Again, a little rougher than I wanted. So let's look at the next project. Okay, so now we're going to do a rapid river. Now, um, I'm not going to, because this one is not set up for a rapid river, I'm going to do the rapid river right here on this uh, cardboard. And I'm just going to show you the techniques because that's all you really need to know. I'm going to take and grab a rock here, uh, a couple rocks, so you have an idea of what we would be doing. There we go. So we need just a couple rocks. Yeah, I'll set that right there. Okay. So to do a rapid river, I'm going to use the gel again. I like the gel because I can make a little more better looking stippling. Then I can't, it's not as soft, and so it makes it look like it's got a lot more movement in it. So you would just take this, and I would just smear this across my river. Now, if I had rocks in here, that means I'm going to have to work kind of around the rocks and all those type of things to just kind of get it in here. And I'm really making this very, very thin, nothing thick. Okay, and when I get done with it nice and thin, again, this is just kind of like frosting again. I'm just frosting it. Now I'm going to kind of glue these a little bit onto here so they don't move quite so bad. And now with that, instead of using a popsicle stick to stipple it with it, I'm going to stipple it with a toothbrush because I want tiny, tiny little ways because I want it to look like it's moving in the direction. And I can kind of do that just like so. And I want them to stand up a bit. Just like that. Whoop. I guess I should glue that in there, but I didn't. But again, I would put the Envirotex into there and these rocks would be in place and then I'm putting this real thin gel on top of here, just kind of creating these tiny little waves. I want tiny waves. And if they're getting too big or the waves are too big, clean off that toothpick because I really want just tiny waves. I just want that effect of movement. Like so. So, and then if I had uh, 
this water would actually go around it all the way and I'd create those tiny little waves all the way around it. Now comes my uh, mistake where I figured out how to make a, a really nice ice. So what I have is this simple sandwich bag here and I'm gonna show you I, I use this over and over again and what I was finding was I was peeling off the acrylic because it was on the sandwich bag and when I peeled it off I was like wow that looks like ice and that's how I end up creating that ice. So you end up with you can make big sheets like this of ice and they look really good. Really a very effective uh, technique. So to make the, the, the uh, rapids that I have right here, if you kind of notice they're not, like these are white. And I don't really like them because they're too white. They look, they're just, they look like they're painted on. I'm gonna be fair with you. This looks like it has movement. And if I wanted to, I could take a little white paint and just dry brush it. And when I say dry brush it, I mean get it hit with white, wipe majority of that paint off of there and just kind of highlight a little bit on here. And you can create the water effect right onto there. And if you want to, if you know the rock is going to be covered in water, you might want to take just maybe a little Envirotex and put it over there. Gel will do the same thing. You don't want to just get it so that it looks wet when you get done. So to make the, the ripples, I uh, kind of played around with a couple things. So what I've got here is a little the gel. This again, this is the Liquitex heavy gel, uh, super gloss heavy gel. And then I grab a little of Woodland Scenic Snow. And I'm gonna mix a little of that into that. There we go. And then I was trying an experiment years ago. I was looking at making my own static grass. These are rayon fibers. You can find these anywhere. Uh, you can look online and get them. I think this bag cost me, is a one pound bag of five millimeter point, uh, 3.0 Decron fibers. So they're, they're very light fibers and they're not very long. I'm just gonna take a little pinch of these cause I got just a little bit of gel here. Probably not gonna use all that I have in my hand. But you can see that they're just nothing more than some rayon fibers. And I use these, that's probably all I'm gonna need, because they give that wave a little body and it'll help form it out. And I just take and mix this all together, just like so. And um, once I've got it mixed together, it makes Are really nice and I'm trying to get make sure all the the fibers are all mixed into that gel and they are now it's got a little body to it and you see there it's got a little, little piece hanging down here and different things that's from the rayon fibers and that helps me in laying this down and creating that body and when it dries it'll dry that kind of like this where it's got a little texture in it and it's also those rayon fibers will kind of sort of be seen not really because you can't tell what they are. But you just take that and you just kind of lay this down. I try to get it on the end of the brush. Or in this case, the popsicle stick. And I'm just trying to lay this down and I literally just pack it right into where the rocks are. Just like so. And it will dry just like you leave it and it's great for that and that's why I like it and it'll create a lot of that foamy water and I'm gonna let these dry so you can see these and we'll take pictures of them dry now I made my ice because what I did is I made a batch of this stuff and I put it in the sandwich bag and then I folded it over and I pressed it down so I could use it again later on because I was, I would, you'd have to layer this. You have to kind of build it up. So when I did this water right here, this water might be two layers here of the first layer and the second layer. And I just kind of built it up until I got exactly what I was looking for in the wave. And when I did that and I laid it like this, 
I then finished it up and I got this whole got this whole project done and I had some of that left and so I just kind of left it in there and about a week or two later I came back and I peeled it back because it had dried out and I wanted to work on it again with another project and I had this layer and when I pulled it out I had this great layer of ice and I'm like wow that would make great ice to go on top of a lake so if you know how a, a lake in the winter time you know it it starts to form ice on the edge. This would be fantastic for or for a pond or, or, or a puddle that's got ice beginning to form on the edge. This would be fantastic. Um, and so, again, mistakes happen, and lo and behold, you find another way to do something. So I'm going to uh, take a photograph of this and let you see it. And um, that's pretty much what I've got for, for different textures. You can modify these and work with them. Um, really, between these two products right here, Mod Podge and the Heavy Gel, you can get a lot. Now, there's another product that's out there. Golden makes a product. I don't see it out here. They have a gel as well. It's somewhere in between these two. And I kind of like that too as well for certain scenes. So uh, that's kind of my, my take on it. And I hope that's helpful. I hope this is really helps you in modeling and modeling water and gives you some ideas and uh, if you got some other ideas we'll expand more down the road but here's my first video on texture for water and I hope it is helpful for you for you and as time goes on and if you're on the Facebook page you'll see my river coming out because what I really want to do is I want to blend these together because that's what happens in a river. If you notice the, the photographs from the very beginning, I've got the river coming down. I got some, some cattails growing up in there. That'll be my calm water. And then it continues underneath the ballast bridge and going into off the table. So anyway, that's what I've got going. I hope this is helpful. And until next month, Merry Christmas and happy modeling. So here's the last photo. I think the end product that I did here looks much better. Yeah, multi-layers. But in any case, till next time, happy modeling.